Hey, thanks for watching the video. We'll be taking a look at the Frozen Sonic Mini MLP resin printer. It's a UV resin printer, and I'll be going over safety with it and taking a look at what you get exactly. I'm not sure I've seen any other videos that addressed the, anything aside from rather enthusiastic conversation about the printer itself, so hopefully this will be a little more on point. Uh, if you'd like the video, please subscribe down below, give it a thumbs up, and Let's see what this thing can do. Ah. Hello, welcome back to the workbench. So today's a little different. I'm actually taking a look at a Frozen Sonic Mini resin printer. Got it in because I need to do some detailed work and I wanted a resin printer that will print a little quicker than the Duplicator 7 I've been working with. So, let's take a look. That's pretty straightforward. It's the printer itself. There isn't too much else in the box. Fortunately, I already have resin for the one how, so that's not going to be much of an issue. Well, between all the plastic and the heavy foam packaging, I'm pretty sure this is not going to move during shipping. And the box itself is a fairly hefty cardboard. So there's the Sonic Mini itself. It's got an LCD screen on the front for entering in the settings that you want to print with once you've designed your printout. I believe it uses a version of Nano DLP on there. This one's also got the metal aluminum tray. That was important because the plastic ones were just taking UV damage, at least from the description. I assume they were taking UV damage from the UV light and just getting destroyed. So. I'm not sure why anyone would want to use a plastic tray with UV light. There might be some plastics that would be more conducive to that, but certainly not whatever they were using on here originally. So this is this is a well worthwhile replacement, and the U.S. versions I found were just shipping with this anyway. They were about $20 or $30 more, which is well worth it to not have to replace this in another week or month or whatever. There's the rod and it's also got a rail that looks pretty good let's see what's in the box you get instructions some feet and a thumb drive 8 gig usb 2.0 some extra components gloves you should pick up a package of those you'll be using a lot of them a tray. Unfortunately, the tray, if you noticed, isn't angled at all on the top, so it's not going to run the resin off of it as it's moving upward, which is a little unfortunate. There might be a better redesign for this, or you may want to design something that's a little more apt. But for the time being, this will work just fine. It's the same style as in the Wen Hao, so it's something I'm accustomed to. You can also print out a little tray on a different 3D printer and FDM, obviously, to sit it, cant it at an angle once you're done, and just let it drip off in the tray. Unfortunately, with the resin printers, I don't like to do that terribly much because they also tend to be pretty, pretty nasty and caustic as far as the resins go, and I don't really want to sit around sucking up the fumes of the resins. So for this, I may end up having to build a second case just to hold the hold the tray when it's off-gassing, when it's running off the resin back into the bin. And power supply, not, eh, not too bad, 24 volt, 1.5 amp. Putty knife, which hopefully I will never have to use. Another funnel. And a scraper, which is probably better than a metal putty knife. I picked the Frozen Sonic Mini because it's got a mono DLP in it. The LCD screen, or MLP maybe then? I'm not sure. Anyway, the LCD screen is mono. It's not a color LCD screen like what you'd find on a phone. It's just one color, so it doesn't have the problem of being, uh, of offering up all the shades. It only offers up the one. It, it offers up more light, so it can cure things faster depending on how you set it up. Oh, geez. 
knock it into place. So it'll cure things a little bit faster, so you don't have to wait around quite as long. Now, that might not be right for every resin, but I've still got the Wanhao duplicator over there in case I need a slower printer. So that'll work just fine. The other printers, the slower ones with the standard LCD screens, are actually fairly dirt cheap. Now, I think I saw them for $150 with what looked like fairly good build quality, whether it was or not, who knows. But let's see what we've got here. And then I'll set it up for a test print. Bit of junk in there. That's actually a bigger print surface than I was expecting, both in the vat and the surface itself, so... Eh, that's okay. That's not bad. It's just that the, the sheets are available uh, at a very low price point for other applications if it's got a smaller area. So I was kind of hoping to get away with using cheaper sheets because I don't need a very big print surface, but that should be fine. All right, one moment and I'll set this up so I can start it printing. Let me see how it does. While I'm setting this up, a word on the quality of the Frozen Sonic Mini. Unlike some of the other printers that I've seen, this one actually has a ABS base rather than a metal one. That is a little strange because it might be exposed to UV. So I'm mildly concerned that this base down here will start to erode from the impact of the UV rays on it if there's any leakage coming from under here. This base is actually metal, the one it's going to be sitting on, so that should be all firm enough. It's not going to have any problem with rigidity. My only concern would be this breaking apart because long-term exposure to the UV, and then if there is, you'd get UV leaking out. So that might require some patching on the inside. Once I've had it running for a little while, I'll probably take it apart, examine the inside of this, Maybe I'll shoot another video on that. And we can see if there's any cracks on it or any problems with it. And I can then coat it with some aluminum tape, possibly, just to keep any, any light refracting off the plastic itself so it doesn't damage the probably ABS. I would have to look for some marks on it, but that's likely what that is. It might be reinforced. It does look like there might be fibers in there, but I'm not great at eyeballing that stuff. And there's not too much for the electronics. You've just got the power, USB, on-off switch, and that's it. There's some grates to let, let airflow go through for the electronics. And let's see what we've got. So the alignment pro the process on this looks like it's pretty simple. You just go into tools, uh, you check the LCD, Looks good, actually, since that's UV. Let me kill the lights, maybe you can see it. That looks pretty good. It's got UV exposure. I don't see any problems with the bed. Hopefully it continues. And that's it for the UV test, I guess, but it seemed to work okay. And now we'll do a Z calibration, take off the resin vat. These are unscrewed, so we've already hit that part. And I need a piece of paper. There we go. All right, piece of paper, screws loosened, and the resin vat is over here, off.
All right, next. Please wait till the build platform moves down to the bottom. Tighten four screws. Make sure this paper is unmovable. Click done to finish calibration. I'm just tightening them in a crosswise pattern so that I won't get an uneven part where it pulls up on a portion of the paper, one of the corners. Eh, paper's still movable. What it wants you to do here is get an actual Z height of zero, which is a little hard to do with any of these machines. Because what you need to do is get it to deflect slightly so that it's just at zero. But we'll see how close we can get it. With a car engine or something like that, you have an order in which you tighten the screws to make sure that everything gets torqued down properly. There. That's probably about right. Let me go ahead and tighten those screws up fully. Paper is certainly movable. I'm not sure they actually mean unmovable, but we're going to follow the directions. Seems pretty even. All right, there, that's not movable and done. Please wait till the build platform move up to the top. And that's it, that should be fully calibrated. So there isn't quite as much work to, to calibrate these as there is with the FDM printers. They're pretty simple in that regard. You just need that one plane to be level and that's how you level it. There isn't much more to it. Since these only have really a Z axis, it's a much, much beefier assembly than what you usually find in the FDMs, just because it can be, not necessarily a problem with, with uh, the FDM printers, but with this, they can just use a big piece of metal to hold everything rigid, and it only needs to be rigid on that one axis, really. You only need to have movement on the one axis, so it's, it's a lot easier to actually get it to work correctly, as opposed to the FDM printers. And that's it. Now, I will get my safety gear, load this up with some resin, and start it printing. That's going to take a while. I'll probably end up coming back to it when it's done, but let me just show you the safety gear quick, and I'll start up a print job on it so that we can see what a small print looks like on this new style of printer. So unlike an FDM printer, a resin printer uses a UV resin, like this one. And those have some properties which aren't so great as far as working with them go. Uh, if you get ex your skin exposed to it, you can have a long-term impact where you uh, develop an allergy, and then anytime you're exposed to it, you have a horrible allergic reaction. So you have to use neoprene gloves anytime you're handling it. Don't get it on any of your skin. Don't get it in any of your, you know, your eyes, nose. Don't get it anywhere. And you probably want to use a vapor mask. For myself, I use a VOC mask with acid uh, filtering. It's just P100, OV rated uh, for organic volatile compounds. It's one of the better masks you can get, and it should filter out anything from that. At least I assume it does. You can correct me if I'm wrong. So, gloves, mask, very important, and also eye protection that's appropriate. I'm using U6 glasses, that should be sufficient. Again, go by whatever the manufacturer's recommendations are. Uh, if the manufacturer's recommendations are horrible, use your own judgment and do your own research. Now, hold on a second, I'm probably not going to be able to speak through this mask, so I will just show you loading up the, the liquids in it and then we'll start up a print in a few minutes and see how it goes. That's it. It should be printing the small gears that I set it up to. I made an array of different angling for the gears and we'll see how they came out. Now it's just a couple hours of waiting for this thing to finish every layer. Hopefully it's working, but 
there isn't really a way to tell easily until it's quite a few layers in. And in this case, they're so short that it'll probably be finished before I actually know if it's working correctly. I'll come back when the print finishes and we'll see how it did. So, as you can see, our print test did not go well. You can probably see the gears that I was trying to print on the bottom of the well of resin there. They didn't actually adhere to the top plate up here. And in fact, you can see that some of the stuff did get on there. So three of them did adhere. I'll have to take them off, see what they look like. But the prints themselves look pretty good. They just um, didn't actually stick to the plate. So I'm going to play around with the settings, see if I can find some that work okay for the blue resin I'm trying to use from Soraya Tech. And I'll post those up as part of this look at the printer too. I'll get it working, then I'll come back and shoot a little bit of video with this. But the printer itself seems to work just fine. I'm probably going to take some video once I get this all set up. I'll do a video with Shitu Box and the printer and show you the working settings for it once I have some because I can't find any online myself. So that's not terribly useful. There didn't appear to be any along with the printer. There weren't any on the drive. Maybe they had some posted to Facebook, but I have no idea. I didn't dig into that that much. Apparently most of their company's web website, web support stuff is all on Facebook, which I found a bit odd. But I'll get this working. I'll get back to it. I'll post up all the stuff I get it working with and the settings and what have you over to the PC Burn website so that you can find it should you get one of these printers and try to print it out yourself. It'll at least give you something to base your settings off of and then you can tailor them to whatever resin you're using or whatever your needs are. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll have a follow-up video with all of that soon. And I will see you next time.